Welcome to the November update for Ruby Rose 2. Now, a couple of things. This is our penultimate update, hopefully. Um, hopefully. Hopefully our penultimate remote update. We have some news about Teresa's visa. So, look, Teresa, you want to fill everyone in on this? Yes. So, we are hoping that my Vietnamese visa will be back shortly. Nix is already kind of in the system and has been, we believe, provisionally approved. And um, I've now submitted my application. So, we're hoping that my visa will come back soon. And um, in short, that we'll be able to get to Vietnam ourselves pretty soon. So, we will be kind of come the new year, early new year, we'll be in Vietnam, I hope, filming ourselves. But for now, as you know, we've been relying on um, the footage taken in the factory by the staff there to make these updates for you. But as Nick said, hopefully the penultimate remote Ruby Rose 2 update. Yep, <laughs> so today it's the 14th of November. Yeah. And we are still in Australia. And so a lot of this, as you know from our previous update, we have been sent a lot of information from Seawind Factory. And today we're going to introduce you to someone who you may have seen before on some of our other videos, that's Shane Grover. Shane Grover has multiple titles, but essentially he is the kind of like the, the, the manager, the, the chief in, in staff, like the Capitan Commandant, all these things. <laughs> but essentially he, he runs the factory in in, in Ho Chi Minh. And he's going to be giving uh, us some explanations about the, the 1370. Just to bring you up to speed, Hull One is now actually really far along. Talking to Shane, I talked to Shane two days ago, so the 12th of November, and he said that essentially all the, the hull is complete, the inserts, all the fiberglass and carbon fiber inserts are complete in Hull One. And next week or the week after, they're now gonna start installing components. So that's plumbing, electrics, engines, all the good stuff that goes into the boat. Hull Two is about two months behind, but, almost like a kind of like a race it's catching up because during the four month lockdown in Ho Chi Minh Sea Wind made a lot of the additional components to go into hull number two so we believe that there's going to be some sort of like catching up so anyway this is our uh, this is this is our boat and hull number one so I hope you enjoy this So here we are, as you can see, this is the starboard side and the team over at Seaman have now moved to give this hull a really glossy polish. Just saying, I wanna point out to you the number of windows, guest cabin, this is the walkway and the heads, and then obviously you can see at the back the aft cabin. There is gonna be so much light in this boat and as a lot of these windows are opening, it's gonna be really light. Again, we have 45 feet, that's 15 meters. And you can see just by kind of like putting this against the actual workers here, how big this boat actually is. So again, a huge boat for us and a huge, huge upscale in what we have. And again, just some workers here, just giving a final polish to the inside of those holes. However, one thing I do want you to notice is these chines. Now the hard chines, as you know, they retain your internal volume while keeping your hull profile nice and thin. And one thing to note, just a number of components that Seawind are making in fiberglass. These are the air conditioning ducts, so loads of little inserts to reduce those squeaks. Now, before we hand over to Shane, this is the engine bay compartment. As you can see, the sail driver is going to fit through here, and these are going to be reverse mounted engines. You can also see the area where the holding tank is going to fit. And as we've already discussed, access for these engines comes from two places, one from the heads and one from outside. Now over to Shane to explain a bit more. Just to give you a sense of scale, this is the engine bay this is behind the, the port head. You can see the engine would be positioned here. The sail drive goes slightly under the back of the shower stall. I've got storage here for the waste tank. I've got plenty of space around me. The deck level would be uh, at around this level, so I'm standing in standing above the deck at the moment, but I crouch down, I've got access to the engine, I've got access all around. The compartment behind me here, this is a sealed, airtight and watertight compartment. So this is for reserve buoyancy. This means that if you get, uh, if you penetrate the, the transom or the rudder shaft, this area is sealed, it's not going to come through into the engine bay. Again, you'll also note, just like the main bulkhead and the other structural bulkheads in the boat, this bulkhead is completely carbon and glassed in. Now moving into the port hull. Now, since we did our last update, so much has come on with hull number one. 
The inserts are all in and you can really see the aft head starting to take shape. Moving forward, we move out of the heads into the corridor that separates the aft heads and the master cabin. And again, you can see what this is meant to look like in the renders. Walking forward, these these walkways are huge. And again, we are looking forward to seeing this huge master cabin, as well as loads of storage space, both under the beds, inside the walk-in wardrobe and in that corridor. So again, for us circumnavigating, this is exactly what we want. Now let's have a look at the saloon area. With the inserts all or almost all in place in the hulls, we can now see the shape of the saloon and how big it's going to be. So again, these renders show this area where the sofa and the dining table are gonna be. Swinging around, you're gonna see where the chart table is going to be. And then as we pan around, you can see this will be exactly where the starboard helm station is. Now let's is. hear from our friend Shane. Okay, so we're down in the starboard owner's hull. This area will form the corridor. This is where you'll have the wardrobes, you'll have the table or additional wardrobe storage if required. And as we move aft, we go into the heads. And in this area, this is where we'll have the, the bench top and basins. You can see we've got the opening window here. We've got windows here. Behind me is where the shower will be. The shower screen will be in this position. So moving aft from here, we go into the full shower stall. You can see it's a significantly sized stall. We've got a small seat here. The main reason for this seat is to provide access and space over the engine. This is enabling us to maximize the cabin space and the engine space. You also see here, this is the access to the sail drive. This, is, this will enable you to do maintenance through the sail drive, either from inside the boat or from deck. As you can see over the top, this gives you direct access over the sail drive. Standing here, I'm standing at about the floor level. I'm 5'11", and so you can see here I've got significant space above my head in most areas. This is this will be one of the lower areas of the boat. As we make our way forward, again through the midships area, and then into the head, the uh, cabin. This is where we'll have our bunk. So you can see we've got half of the bunk moulded into the furniture here. Half of it will hang over as part of the timber work. So that will come out to this area here, the steps up either side of the bunk, as you've seen in the renderings. And again, to give you an idea of scale, standing here, you can see how much room I have above me to the bulkhead and how much room I have above me to the deck level. So significant height here. Not gonna have a problem with headroom. Again, visibility-wise, this is my line of sight. I'm, I'm at the top level of the window here. <clears throat> You've got good visibility out the window, and for the length of this cabin, most of this is open. Again, as we move forward, we have the wardrobe space up here with plenty of space for storage, both high and low. And then below the floor, we have access panels in most areas. which opens up access into the bilge. And you'll notice up here the full carbon fiber main bulkhead. You'll also notice carbon fiber on the companionway bulkhead, on the stringers, around the windows, and in most structural areas of the hull. So that's all this all this black composite that you see, this is all carbon fiber. So what you're seeing here, we've got our furniture built into the boat. And we also now have the companionway bulkhead, which is part of the headliner for the two aft cabins. That is now in the in hull number one. You'll see it's all glued and glassed in. It's all glassed into the hull. Okay, now we're in the aft cabin. And you can see we've molded this area so that there's a lot of access underneath the bed. So this can be used for the optional drawers or for luggage uh, or larger items like uh, surfboards and uh, inflatables. Over the back of the bed here is where you'll have the access to the engine room. And you can see here you've got quite a large access panel and this gives me full access to the engine, stern drive, 
from inside the boat. Again, you'll notice the height of this hatch is above the waterline. It's actually above the, you know, the uh, immersed waterline if that compartment was to become flooded. It's a good safety feature and also enables us to access the engine internally in case of uh, bad weather, making the deck access uh, uncomfortable. Now we've found our way to the guest cabin and you can see the bed structure up here. We've got steps to get onto the bed and then we've also got our single berth forward which as you can see has the area to be converted into a workspace. Storage forward, storage inboard, the storage below the bunk as well and then we have our outboard cabinetry to go in out here. Thanks Shane for those details and then obviously finally forward we have the final berth and the workshop which I am so excited about. I hope you guys really enjoyed that update. This footage that the Seaman Factory is sending us, I find it so fascinating and I hope you guys are as well. Let us know in the comments down below how you're feeling. We are super excited about Rubaroos too. And let us know if you're finding these updates as interesting as we are. Yeah, look, pretty awesome. As I said, the penultimate update, hopefully from Australia. We will do one just before Christmas and then January is gonna be us in Vietnam. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this super super excited if you have questions about the build i know that some of you aren't as into the technical details as we are or i am i think coming up as we get into build there's gonna be some real nerdy stuff so if you're into kind of like the nerdy stats then this is probably gonna be for you so hope you enjoy that we'll catch up with you real soon goodbye